So for those who are comfortable, I recommend really considering adopting a private pay business model. Mm-hmm. Because once you're private pay, you now take more ownership and, and responsibility of your income. This episode is sponsored by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. Be sure and check them out and be sure and use the promo code Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can try them out for two months for free. A little over 15 years ago, when I started my private practice, I had to learn a lot and most of it the hard way. And I don't think you need to do the same. Hi, I'm Gordon Brewer, a licensed psychotherapist, and welcome to the Practice of Therapy podcast, part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts. Join me in this journey of discovery as we have conversations with other leaders and professionals in both the mental and allied health fields. Join us as we explore both the business and clinical sides of running a private practice. This is Gordon Brewer, and this is episode number 315 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. So glad you've joined me on this journey. So glad you're with me. Um, you know, one one of the things I love about doing this podcast is I get to meet so many cool people and just get to have a lot of great, meaningful conversations with with other therapists, with other folks just across the country. And uh, in this particular episode, I get to have a conversation with Jamal Jones. And Jamal is, um, and I talk about our mindset. And I know I've, I've covered that topic a lot in previous episodes, but I think it's also something that is good for us to revisit because Jamal, as he said, like me, we've both learned a lot. Uh, a lot of stuff the hard way. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to you hearing my conversation with Jamal just about how he's kind of overcome some of the mindset uh, issues that he's had, particularly around around money and setting fees and all of that sort of thing. And so I think it, you're going to enjoy this conversation. Uh, but before we get to my conversation with Jamal, a few things I'd love for you to check out. First of all, I'd love for you to check out the Peer Network. A few episodes back, I had a conversation with Kurt Schmidt, and we talked about the Peer Network. And um, it is a wonderful service that he's put together for helping people connect with peer support specialists or peer support uh, people, particularly in the addiction arena. And I'd love for you to go check it out. Just go to the Peer Network. Dot com and you'll find links here in the in the show notes and the show summary so that you can find out more about that you know one of the things I know with all of us uh, working in these fields we always run across people that are struggling with addiction issues or substance abuse issues and one of the best resources for folks that are going through recovery is having a network of peers or peers that have been there themselves that it can help them through that. And so uh, the peer network is a way for people to connect with those folks. And uh, uh, Kurt has created a a pretty extensive database in helping people match up with peer support people. So be sure and check it out, uh, thepeernetwork.com. And again, there'll be links here in the show notes and the show summary for you to find out more about that. And also, I'd love for you to go check out Mental Health Wear TN, Mental Health Wear Tennessee, and it's Mental Health Wear tn.com and my good friend Ashley has put this online store together to give you some bling and some swag around our professions but also some inspirational stuff for folks that are um, moving through their mental health and addiction recovery journeys so be sure and check it out and use the promo code just pot24 and you can get 25% off your first order by um, using that coupon code so be sure and check it out, mentalhealthwaretn.com. 
and uh, she's put together some really cool stuff there. And also, real quickly before we get to my conversation with Jamal, I'd love for you to hear more about one of the podcasts in the Sightcraft Network, along with a word from our sponsor of the podcast, Therapy Notes. Hey there, I'm Chris McDonald, and if you don't know me yet, I'm host of the Holistic Counseling Podcast, which is for therapists who want to deepen their knowledge of holistic modalities and build their practice with confidence. The Holistic Counseling Podcast is proudly part of the Sightcraft Podcast Network, a network of podcasts focused on helping people live more meaningful and productive lives. Join me each week as we explore the best practices for integrating holistic approaches into therapy and delve into the many benefits. Whether you're looking for new techniques or seeking to deepen your own personal journey towards wellness, this podcast is the perfect companion for your holistic path. If you haven't listened yet, you can find it over at holisticcounselingpodcast.com and discover other resources including products, books, and other trainings to help support you in your holistic journey. Have you ever wished your private practice could run as smoothly as a well-oiled machine? Well, look no further because Therapy Notes is here to revolutionize your practice. Therapy Notes is the complete practice management system you've been dreaming of. With everything you need to manage patient records, schedule appointments, meet with clients remotely, create rich documentation, and handle insurance billing, it's your secret weapon for a smoother practice. And the best part? It's accessible wherever and whenever you need it. Yep, even on the go. Imagine having more time for what truly matters, your clients. It's like having an extra set of hands, but digital. And here's the kicker. It's the very EHR Gordon relies on in his own practice. So, you know, it's the real deal. Say goodbye to paperwork nightmares and hello to more time and better quality care. Check out Therapy Notes today at practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. Oh, and don't forget to use the promo code GORDON to get two months free. That's practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes with the promo code GORDON. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the podcast. And I'm so happy for you to get to know today Jamal Jones. Welcome, Jamal. Thank you, Gordon. Glad to be here. Uh, yes, yes. And we were just kind of touching base before we started. But Jamal, as I start with everyone, tell folks a little bit more about yourself and how you've landed where you've landed. Well, Gordon, I am a PK. My father mm-hmm. is a pastor. My mother is a devout woman of faith. So I was fortunate to grow up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. the Bay Area, born in San Francisco, raised in East Oakland, the youngest of five kids. So for me, faith has always been an intricate part of my family background. When I was 13, that's when I decided to embrace my own personal profession in uh, Christ as my Lord and Savior. And sports have also been a, a major part of my life. And so I was fortunate to get a scholarship um, to go to college at Fresno State and play mm-hmm. football. And that's where I got introduced to an organization called the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FCA. Uh-huh. And in 2007, 2008, I was on staff with FCA um, as a pastor. And I just experienced all this anxiety and fear around fundraising and whether or not I could continue to fundraise my entire ministry budget and do it long term. And I literally got scared back into graduate school. And in that process, I was trying to think through well, if I'm not going to continue doing ministry through FCA or something as a pastor, how do my skills transfer into the secular world? And that's how I ended up enrolling in the MFT program and gave my master's in marriage, family child therapy. And mm-hmm. I always knew I wanted to be in private practice. I, I didn't know how I exactly get there. And I didn't fully understand what I was asking for, but it was a dream. It was a goal. And as you probably know yourself, Working as a mental health care professional in healthcare, it is not for the faint of heart. When it comes to like the productivity requirements and the high caseloads and the ability to consistently meet the demands of the client care and documentation and collaboration and 
it's tough. Mm-hmm. So when I got licensed in 2017, I had a belief that I was going to continue to be able to serve at a high level of excellence and impact lives. I wanted to obviously increase my income, but I also wanted to have a better work-life balance. Right. And that didn't happen for me. As a matter of fact, once I got licensed, the pressure was even higher. The companies I worked for were understaffed. And I found myself showing up like really anxious and afraid to take time off from work. And and eventually in 2019, I was actually let go by my last employer. I was 38 years old. And that was one of the worst times of my life. Now I was 38 with a young family, uh, LMFT, unemployed. And all I can do is like, what am I, what in the world am I going to do now? Mm-hmm. Um, sure. I felt like a failure. I was embarrassed. I was humiliated. But that's when I decided to pursue my dream and start my own private practice. And in private practice, one of the first moves I made, looking back, I would now call it more of a mistake, a learning experience that I had, was I partnered with a tech company. And it was great initially because the tech company took care of all the marketing, the advertising, the billing. They matched me with clients. I built a caseload fast. But I was only getting compensated $25 if I had a full 50-minute session. Mm -hmm. And as you know, Gordon, that's just not sustainable. Right, right. Uh, So I did leave that tech company. And eventually I would transition into being a private pay practice. And I had this journey of where I converted some clients from the tech company to private pay. And I would eventually do some work around money mindset and the coaching program and learn to increase my fees. And clients began investing at 250 for a one-off session. But God has really had me on a journey over the course of the last two years or so, where I've really mm-hmm. seen some transformation in my own healing and having a, a better relationship with, with God and a better relationship with money. And I've gone from getting paid you know, $25 through a tech company to receiving $250 for a one-off session to mm-hmm. literally generating thousands of dollars with premium therapy packages. Yes. Yes, that that's amazing. And I think, yeah, I think all of us have experienced different times in our life where we've really struggled. And I think also just being able to get your head around the money mindset. So, yeah. So when you say money mindset, what do you what do you see change for you and just thinking about money? As a person of faith, I've always been aware of, of things like stewardship. And um, there's a thing out there called the prosperity gospel. And mm-hmm. um, there's also a, a poverty gospel set of beliefs um, here at, in mental health. There's a lot, to, uh, there's a lot discussed about operating from a place of fear, the, um, a belief that there just isn't enough clients or enough opportunity or in contrast to operate from a place of abundance And so for me, integrating my faith and my understanding of best practice in psychology, my story, I kind of naturally, I have a natural tendency toward the poverty gospel where that sense Mm -hmm. of like to be in alignment with my higher power and to be righteous or a good follower of my faith, you know, sacrifice Mm -hmm. it all and, 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 and be broken be poor. And so I had to learn that and being a better steward um, of my time and my resources or my licensure, my education and background and being a better steward to become comfortable with the idea of that you can be a person of faith and you can be congruent in who you are. And at the same time, you can uh, make a lot of money, uh, generate income and take those resources and use it for good. Yes, yes. And I think that's, I know that's a a struggle a lot of us have had just around, you know, naturally we're helping professions. And uh, two, I come from a background of faith as well. And there's some messages around that that I think can be taken to the extreme about, you know, the whole thing about scarcity mindset and particularly, you know, what, you know, 
poverty, but there's also poverty of spirit, part poverty of, you know, our own well being, and that's what we're, you know, as mental health providers, we're there to help people with that. And if we're not getting paid, and if we're not getting making a living, you know, a fair living, and doing that, then we're not able to help people. And so I think being able to overcome those kinds of things is is important. And our clients, they need us so desperately. As you know, we live in a time in history where there's less of a stigma around Mm -hmm. mental health. Um, People are recognizing the need for mental health services. It's more normalized to seek out help. And it's, it's not our client's responsibility to know what our needs are for our businesses. Mm -hmm. That's where we as mental health entrepreneurs have to not only embrace the clinical aspect of our work, because many of us are obviously licensed and many acquire multiple certifications and we upkeep with our continued education requirements, all of those things, because we're so passionate. And as you said, we are helpers and healers. That's the way we're wired. Um, But it's also important for us to realize that we are also the CEO of our company. Mm -hmm. And as a CEO of our company, we got to be cognizant of things like retirement, um, taxes, um, CEUs, um, all our operational expenses. How much, how much money does our company need to generate so that we can bring home our, a salary to take care of ourselves and our family independent of the business there's all these things that's tied to being a small business owner, the marketing, the advertising, the leadership yeah. you provide in the company. And that's where I've really become passionate about is once I began to realize the weight and responsibility of being a small business owner and how that's tied to our fee structure, it really just gave me more of a sense of calm and confidence with increasing my fees Uh, Mm -hmm. as opposed to undercharging for services. Yes, right, right, yeah. That's uh, a real important step, real important steps, rather. So I know, Jamal, one of the things that we, uh, one of the things that I know you're passionate about is just helping people with burnout and just getting kind of stuck or spinning our wheels in the mud, as I like to call it sometimes. So, yeah. So what what have you learned about that through your own journey? In my own journey, Gordon, I've discovered that the traditional one-to-one fee-for-service model, uh, when it comes to serving our clients at the highest level of excellence and protecting ourselves from burnout, may not be the best business model uh, to have as a therapist in private practice especially if you're private pay. Mm-hmm. I'm an advocate for insurance. It's, it's important for us to be accessible to as many people as possible. But the reality is tech companies and insurance companies usually underpay the provider. So now we get caught where we're underpaid by the, are not reimbursed at the highest level for our services. And now we have this huge caseload. So for those who are comfortable, I recommend really considering adopting a private pay business model. Because Mm -hmm. once you're private pay, you now take more ownership and and responsibility of your income. Mm -hmm. But once you're private pay, you still got to be mindful of what are your fees? Because Mm -hmm. if you're undercharging, I basically experienced burnout in public practice, either because of undercharging for for my services or getting reimbursed at too low a rate. And that one-to-one trying to see so many clients on a weekly basis throughout the year. For me, it's just not sustainable. So last mm-hmm. year, and being part of a mastermind, which really stretched me and grew me, I began to adopt this mindset of value-based pricing, where I began mm-hmm. to think about what's the value of somebody coming to our practice and them not wanting to live anymore, them having complex trauma, having unresolved grief and loss over a period of decades and them not being able to show up for their work and be productive and at risk of losing their jobs. When people come to us, oftentimes they're in a lot of turmoil and distress. And what value do you place on our ability as healthcare providers to actually resource these people and and still hope in them and help them find purpose 
beyond their suffering and to help them overcome trauma and to help them have closure in their grief. I mean, the value of what we do is so significant. So with that context, uh, last year, I began offering these premium therapy packages. And Gordon, I've gone from just for one story to kind of highlight this for you in terms of my money mindset and the spiritual journey and the psychological insights tied to it. One client left a tech company with me and invested. He began investing $75 per session. I would then later level him up to $175 per session. Mm -hmm. Um, Last year, uh, this same client put down a $4,000 deposit Mm -hmm. toward an $8,000 therapy package. Mm -hmm. That's great. And that just speaks to the, the power of having a healthy relationship with money, but it also speaks to there's client, there are clients out there in every mm-hmm. part of the country who want to invest in themselves and they want to invest at a high level. Uh, but it's, but if, if we as providers are comfortable with that, mm-hmm. then we can do it as well. Right, right. Yeah, you make a really good point. You know, I think about, you know, one of the things is really looking at creative ways to to bring in income in different ways. And as you as you alluded to earlier, you know, the the one to one model of providing therapy is good and it's necessary. We need to keep doing that. But there's a there's a ceiling to it. I mean, there's only so much you can charge and only so many sessions that you can provide. And so looking for other ways to diversify income streams and to be able to find other ways to, to help people is so important. It's going from the one-to-one way of helping people to the one-to-many. And so being able to look for ways of doing that is, is, is such a good thing. And the, the other thing that you kind of mentioned is I think you're right. Burnout, burnout occurs when we feel like what we're doing is undervalued. Mm-hmm. It does. And as a W-2 employee, I can remember working different jobs in different settings, where as a W-2 employee, uh, you might have a life goal and your income is tied to that life goal and you might want to decide to work overtime or to work two jobs mm-hmm. or to have that annual evaluation and get a raise, a, a, a merit increase. Mm-hmm. That's the norm when you're a W-2 employee. Um, but once we embark on this journey of entrepreneurship and being a small business owner, uh, once we're aware of it, because oftentimes, even though we transition into small business, we might still be operating with that W-2 mindset. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important for us to have our own process that we go through to kind of realign ourselves and come to realize as an entrepreneur we are now responsible for determining our income, uh, our merit increase, our lack thereof. Mm -hmm. And if we are comfortable undercharging for our services as professional service providers, that's on us. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be mindful of that so that we're not being resentful toward our clients or angry toward, you know, insurance companies or frustrated with tech companies or, you know, being miserable within ourselves. Uh, because if, if we're struggling with burnout, which is very common for many of us, uh, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, right. We can right. grow our, uh, raise our beliefs about our services and really just recognize the value um, of our services mm-hmm. and learn to communicate that to our clients. And there are people out there who are on our caseloads and who want to be on our caseloads. Uh, but if we are comfortable around money and talking about money and having conversations about raising fees and being comfortable and confident and stating our fees, things of that nature, then now we're, we're, we're actually hurting ourselves. Right. Yeah. It's so important for people to kind of get past the imposter syndrome that I think can uh, affect a lot of us of just feeling, feeling like, okay, I'm not, I'm not worth that amount or I'm not worth that much. But yeah, when you look at the amount of money that all of us spend in getting through advanced degrees and being able to do what we need to do to get to where we are, it really, we are really worth that much. 
Oh, if you are a LMFT, LCSW, LPCC, if you are a licensed mental health care provider, I just want to remind you that you are you are worth every penny. You are worth mm-hmm. every dollar. You are trained. Uh, you are qualified. You are gifted. Uh, you may be led to get an, 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 an certification because you're dedicated to your personal growth and development. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you're not obligated to do that to be good enough. Mm-hmm. So I just want to tell all our colleagues out there listening, you are right where you're at. You are good enough and you are valuable. Your services are valuable. They are desperately needed. So that imposter syndrome, it's real. And I think that's one of the keys for us as an industry to move our industry forward is for us as a community to begin to speak out and recognize that we're good enough. When you look at what's happening at this time in history with the rise of the coaching industry, you could be someone who does not have the same background or or training, our level of education, and decided and decide to become a coach. And you can niche down and develop your framework on how to help people. And the coaching industry is has grown leaps and bounds. Mm-hmm. And some mental health professionals are actually leaving mental health to go into coaching. I just want people folks to know that mental health services are needed desperately. Solo practices, group practices. And if you're called to serve in mental health um, and you're having any self-doubt, are you feeling like you don't belong anymore? I want to remind you that you belong, you are valuable, your services are valuable, and within you and with good counsel from a coach or a trusted financial advisor, accountant, resources that are available, you can increase your rates Mm -hmm. substantially. And yeah. at the same time, still be accessible to those who may not be able to invest at that same level. Right, right. Yeah, that's a, so much truth there. So, yeah, so you've made, uh, dipped your toe in the water around coaching. And so say a little bit about that. I'm actually now a growth coach with Therapist and Power Practice. Uh-huh. Because um, I, I believe that, so I have my clinical practice. But also, as I've been on my own journey, I just see the need to help other therapists uh, with their money mindset, with their marketing and their sales. Um, If you're going to be a private pay practitioner or a therapist in private practice who has a private pay practice, the trade-off, right, when you're with insurance companies, they do the marketing, they do the advertising, and you don't have to sell anything, really. But when you're a private pay that money mindset work, the marketing and sales play a huge role. So I'm now on a mission this year in 2024 to help at least 12 therapists in private practice uh, with their money mindset, their marketing and their sales and help them adopt this package model if that's what they would like to do. And that would allow me to have a greater impact because if I can help 12 therapists increase their fees and improve their marketing, Mm -hmm. and have a healthy mindset around sales. Because for some, there's a strong stigma tied to the idea of being a sales professional. But to be a sales professional isn't necessarily a a bad thing, a a dirty word, or, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not a, you don't have to be a a dirty, nasty, bad car salesman necessarily. Right. And so- that's an area of growth for me that I've had to also work on. Mm-hmm. And so I'm glad to pay it forward to help others. Right, right. Yeah, I think uh, so when it comes to marketing, the way I like to think about it is it's really just being able to to put yourself out there in a way to help people find you because there's more than enough people out there that need our help and want our help and want to want to work with each of us for different reasons. So, I mean, yeah, I think that's important point. So, yeah. Well, Jamal, I've got to be respectful of your time. And, you know, I've really enjoyed our conversation. Tell folks how they might be able to get in touch with you and the things that you can help them with. People can find me on on LinkedIn, Jamal Jones LMFT. You can also find me on Facebook, 
Jamal Jones. I also have a YouTube channel for my coaching business, The Purpose Driven Therapist. And you can also go to my landing page, The Purpose Driven Therapist dot com forward slash home to awesome. learn more about my offerings and i look forward to serving those who I'm, who I'm called to serve so feel free to reach out yes yes and we'll have links here in the show notes in the show summary and be sure and check it out so jamal thanks for being on the podcast and i hope that we'll have some more conversations here in the future Well, again, a big thanks to Jamal for being on the podcast and be sure and check out his things uh, at the Purpose Driven Therapist. Um, And again, you'll find a link here uh, in the show notes and the show summary to check what he's got to offer out. Um, You know, I think um, and just reflecting on our conversation, I think one of the most important things that we can do to, to ensure our success is knowing how to take care of ourselves. And that it includes our money mindset and learning about um, setting boundaries for ourselves, but also um, just learning how to um, have the correct mindset so we don't get burned out. So again, thanks to Jamal for being on the, on the podcast and um, be sure and check his things out. Also, big thanks to our sponsor of the podcast, Therapy Notes. They are the leading electronic health record system for mental health providers. They're who I use in my practice, and you can find out more about them by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. And be sure and use the promo code just Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, to try them out for two months for free. And I'm so glad to be partnering with them for another year. And um, yeah, so glad they're glad they're part of this journey with me. And also be sure and check out the peer network. And particularly for those of you that might be working with folks that are looking for extra support around addictions and um, recovery. Uh, It's a wonderful way for people to connect with other people that are along the same journey and know how to navigate it all. So be sure and check it out, thepeernetwork.com. And um, glad to have them as part of this journey with me as well. And uh, finally, check out mentalhealthwaretn.com and use the promo code just POT24 and you can get 25% off any of the, the things that you'll find there. So take care, folks. Glad you're with me on this journey. Looking forward to being with you in future episodes. Got a lot of great people lined up. And um, be sure and go over to the Practice of Therapy um, website, just practiceoftherapy.com, and find out about all the resources we're gathering there. Just lots of great stuff. There's some free things for you, particularly the the uh, private practice startup guide, which I'm in the process of updating. So be sure and check it out. Take care, folks, and we'll be with you again next time. And oh, be sure to follow us and subscribe to the podcast wherever you might be listening to it. been listening to the practice of therapy podcast with gordon brewer part of the Psychcraft network of podcasts you can find out more about the other great podcasts in the network by visiting psychcraftnetwork.com and if you haven't done so already please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com and get your free private practice startup guide along with a lot of other great resources and webinars and free things just by visiting. Also, be sure to follow us wherever you might be listening to your podcasts. This podcast is intended to be educational in purpose and is not intended to give legal accounting or counseling advice. If you need a professional, find the right person for that.